This is the story of the priest and the necromancer. I think. And uh, so, let me start by um, describing what is this about. So. Uh, our protagonist, the priest, is Jody, is Jod Hamilton. So Jod worked for this association calling the Rose Cross, which is a very ancient Catholic branch of um, knights that defended the Catholic Church. Um, and they were basically priests that uh, take weapons and they were masters in, in battle. After our, uh, the time passed and their generations passed, these guys became like the murders of the Catholic Church, a very dark branch of it. Their task is to look for um, let's say, things that are against the Catholic Church, investigate it, and uh, get rid of them. So Judd worked for uh, this association that's the, uh, as I mentioned, the, the Rose Cross. And this association uh, is dependent of another one that is called the anvil. So the anvil is a branch that uh, is linked with the Catholic Church but they are more into politics. So these people are trained since a very young age in religion, uh, politics, uh, economics, and they are very dedicated people. Uh, since young age they are, uh, they are told to be leaders they are uh, trained to be leaders and they become leaders. Uh, they are usually in politicians, in, in, po in politics and in the, this uh, um, management of uh, large corporations. So this, is a, uh, this is a fictional story, uh, all these places don't exist of course. I need to clarify this. Uh, these associations don't exist, but this is the, the environment in which this uh, st story is being developed. So, Joe uh, enters very from from a very young age into uh, this association because of his family. His family was Catholic, and they are uh, living in a city that has this. Um, a strong influence from the Catholic Church and uh, most of the, his friends and everyone went to Catholic colleges and schools and uh, so they decided if they go one way or the other. So he was approached uh, by this recruiter and asked him, well, do you want to know more, do you want to belong to this uh, association and uh, know how the world works and everything. He said he was curious about it so he said yes. So that's how he got involved in there. Now, you cannot uh, be part of it if uh, you are not a Catholic at least for 10 generations. So it's hard to get there. Uh, it's even harder to be a part of Envil. Uh, but um, at the end he, he made it and he ended up in a very good position there. He was young, he was uh, around 22 years old and uh, of course single, so he um, was in his uh, path to become a priest. And uh, Ross Cross uh, Knight. So um, apart from his school and attending the, the seminar as he usually do, uh, he had some friends that uh, were part of uh, the politic branch 
of uh, this association called AMBEL. And they uh, have reunions and uh, chats and everything and uh, of what was going on in politics and in the world. And this play called The Castle. They called it The Castle, but in reality it was just a building that was in downtown in a very narrow street, pretty much uh, um, uh, non a well, very remarkable building. Uh, it's, uh, the intention was not to be uh, very noticeable. So it looks like any other uh, office building from the outside. Uh, when you enter to this building, uh, the first thing you see is this uh, reception desk. It's a very small reception and two security guards uh, that were guarding the uh, this um, reception area and the door that uh, goes inside to the building. Uh, after that uh, there is a small hall with uh, chairs and everything like for uh, waiting, like a waiting room. And uh, in that, uh, more like a hall but uh, a little bit bigger so it was actually a room. And there were a lot of chairs uh, close to the doors to uh, the visit, visitors, to, so they were attending, and uh, behind each door there were different areas of this uh, association, and at the end of this hall, and all this hall and the doors that were on the, on the first floor after entering by the reception, uh, well, there were visitors that conducted the second floor, and the second floor uh, was something very similar, but at the end it, well, there was, they had this uh, kind of uh, conference room um pretty much the same happens on the on the third and fourth floor so it was a four floor building so it was kind of a big for its time and it was not the only one in the country this was one of, of a large chain of places so this building was used to train and educate the young um, students into the ways of the of Embel and the Ross Cross. The, the, as I mentioned, Ross Cross was more uh, um, action uh, branch, and Embel was more like an intellectual branch, a political branch, who managed the money and uh, politics and the power of where they. Uh, belong. So one of their targets was to get uh, a sure that can get as much control as, as they could of the government branches and uh, all the political branches on the on the countries that they uh, were in. So of course they had enemies uh, for other political uh, parties and stuff that realized that uh, this uh, type of cult existed. But they managed to uh, remain kind of innocent and out of the sight of the strangers. So rumors were very strong about them. Uh, people realized they, they exist, but more like uh, some gospel or stuff, um, not like real thing and more like uh, uh, religious stuff. But in fact, they were a very strong political uh, party and very strong, uh, they have a very strong involvement in economics and politics in, in the world. So, on one of the basis that Jod made to uh, this place, uh, one of his friends, um, introduced him to uh, Abraham White. Abraham was a part of uh, Anvil and uh, he was an older guy, like around 40, uh, someone that was, uh, let's say, for a long time involved in stuff that were going on there. So he um, introduced, the, they were introduced and were talking about how everything works in this association, etc. Uh, things that were not um, strange for Jod. Jod was kind of aware of most of the things that were going on. 
and uh, pretty much what the job of, uh, of a Ross Cross was in, in this war, in this association. So Abraham uh, was talking to him and uh, mm, told him, you know what, we, we have this uh, other um, associations that we consider uh, that are a threat to to our lifestyle and to society and, and we are trying to get rid of those and we have a lot of ways to do it. So, uh, but first we need to investigate them and see if how the, mm, much influence they have on society, on society and how dangerous they are. So I want you to uh, get involved in one case that we are um, having right now and uh, just go and investigate and just keep us informed of what's happening, if uh, you agree. So uh, Judd was uh, very uh, happy about this. He felt like finally he was being taken serious and uh, they gave him a task that was important. and. Uh, he immediately said yes and uh, got ready for, for the mission and uh, Abraham told him, you don't, you don't need to rush, this is not really, a, well it's an important mission, it's uh, more of uh, uh, collecting information and uh, telling us uh, what's the current situation of this uh, particular thing that we consider a threat. Um, so he was uh, um, giving this file in which they have uh, information about this person called Felicia Roy. So Felicia had a, a file in which they are mentioned he was a necromancer and uh, that, uh, he was involved in divination, uh, meddling, and uh, basically involved in uh, dark arts and uh, so um, he took the file and started uh, looking at this. And he, it was a very uh, nice looking lady who was in the picture. Uh, and for a young boy like him, seems uh, interesting uh, even more. So uh, what he did, um, he scaled a meeting. In, um, well, Felicia had uh, this small place in which she um, performs adivinations and uh, read uh, cards and, and uh, hand reading for other people. Felicia was 21, she was pretty young and uh, there was not really much information about their past and their parents. So um, this was kind of an empty file pretty much. Just, uh, just the uh, general information about her, uh, where she works, where she lives, uh, what she does in her in her job, and uh, uh, very very uh, small details. So his plan was pretty simple. What he was uh, going to do, I mean, uh, job plans, was just to go and uh, ask her for a. Uh, Tell him, tell him his fortune. And uh, so uh, he went there, and um, so Felicia, uh, as he entered the place, there was another person there, uh, Elba Toledo, and so he started talking with her before entering into the, into the room, asking all about what she knew about Felicia and uh, how good she was, etc., pretending to be uh, a regular. Uh, customer of this stuff. So he knew a little bit about this, so he tried to make questions uh, pretending to be a, a fanatic or uh, a believer of this stuff. But Elva looked uh, look at him and um, realized that there was something funny about this guy um, for two reasons. He was asking too many questions and uh, it was the first time he was there. 
so at the end, she, uh, she decided that, well, maybe he's really curious about this, and he just dismissed all, all, all her thoughts about him. So finally, one of the customer that was in there uh, left the, the place, and uh, Jod entered and met Felicia for the first time. So there she was, it was a very beautiful young lady, very good looking, and uh, the setup of the place was uh, a little bit dark, lights were uh, teamed down, and uh, a lot of black uh, fabric were all around the place. To make like kind of an environment, and a smell of incense was uh, in the place. So he saw the incense burning in one spot, and uh, a lot of amulets and uh, little uh, stuff. Who, uh, like for creating a, a, a magical environment in this place. So he looked at her, and uh, she uh, looked at him very uh, regular, like. Uh, when you go to a doctor and they barely uh, turn their face up to see you in the eyes. And uh, so she asked, what can I do for you? And he said, well, I, I want you to uh, help me read my hands and tell me my future and what am I going to expect in life. And also, if there is something that I should be aware of in my future life. And she said, oh, okay, you sit here and I will gladly help you with it. So he, he took seat and uh, and uh, she asked him to give him her he give give her his uh, left hand. So she started reading his hand and said, "Oh, you come from a um, a religious family. Uh, you have a religious background, and um, you have a lot of faith, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Kind of um, trying to match his previous life. Uh, uh, a little bit and uh, most of the things were almost right but kind of very ambiguous so if you were out this is just a trick uh, uh, it's uh, something very generalized in fortune tellers that they say very general stuff or uh, good stuff that you feel uh, that you want to be true uh, etc. So after that, uh, she asked for the right hand, and uh, he gave it to her. And she said, "Well, well, I see something really important happening in the near future. So you need to be careful with your health. And uh, but other than that, you will have a very bright future. You, know, you look like a very intelligent person, and." Uh, So general stuff and, and, and things like that. So uh, he uh, thanked her for the service, etc. He asked him, what, what other things can you do? Can you uh, do a medium or can you do uh, read, um, cards or do something else? So she said, oh yeah, I can do this, I can do that, etc. And he said, oh, okay, I, I may um, contact you later for something else, etc. So um, he took one of the cards when he was walking out. He said goodbye to um, to Felicia and uh, Elba that was in the entrance, and he took one of the cards that was uh, pretty much almost uh, mm, by the door when he was walking out. So the place was pretty small. It's just this door. A couple of chairs, uh, this little table where the cards were, then another door, and back in the in the uh, in the back of us, uh, Felicia with uh, this setup that she had. So that was the first uh, encounter they had. So he he realized he needed to wait a little bit to not make to not be suspicious. So he waited around a month. Then he called and uh, Elsa picked up the phone and sorry Elba picked up the phone and he told her, oh, you know what I want to go there I, I want uh, this and that and uh, can I arrange uh, uh, 
an interview, uh, an appointment.